interestingly, we wrote a little bit of code together inside of the Caesar Cipher demo class as we explored the scanner object. Today, we're going to leave aside the Caesar Cipher demo class for now. We'll go back to it. And we're going to start implementing methods inside of the Caesar Cipher class itself. Okay. Um, and in doing so, we're going to go through each of these new topics from, from chapter four as we go. So go ahead and open up the Caesar Cipher class. Um, this class has some code and stuff already in it. Um, the reason for that is I wanted this to be a functioning example when we're done. Um, but yet I didn't want to take the class time for us to type this whole thing, which would have been really tedious. And secondly, there's some concepts needed to make this a functioning example that we won't learn until the next unit. So I didn't want to spend a lot of time on those now because we're going to learn about them later. That said, of course, if you're curious, you can read through the methods that I've written. Um, I tried to document them. There's some cool things in here. You'll see some stuff that's coming up in, in future units. Um, you'll see some comments and things that are beyond even the scope of this course, um, but you might find, find interesting. So there's a couple methods here already written for us. We're just gonna leave B. One calculates what is the average time to crack the cipher based on how many seconds for each guess. We're gonna be invoking this method later. Um, the other method that's already written is the method that actually encrypts the text using the, the key phrase and stuff. Um, and that requires some loops. So uh, that's written for us. We're gonna, add some, we're gonna add a method today up here in this blank space between our instance variables um, and the methods that are already written. Let's write the method header first, and then we'll talk about what it does. So we're gonna write a method. This is gonna be public. This is a method we're going to invoke from the Caesar Cipher demo class um, later. This method is gonna return a string and the name of the method is get complexity description. Description. It takes one parameter of type int, which is gonna be sec per guess, seconds per guess. So, we have that method that will calculate the average time to crack the cipher. Um, and that, that average time will be in seconds and it will be a huge number of seconds. In fact, it'll be such a large number of seconds that to, to most users of our program, it, the number won't hold any meaning. It'll be too big of a number to hold meaning. So what this method is going to do is it's gonna take this really big numbers in seconds and it's gonna convert it into something more understandable to the user. Instead of saying there's so many bazillion seconds, we'll say, hey, it's gonna take this many years and this many days and this many hours and this many minutes and this many seconds, which is gonna be a lot more understandable. People can wrap their head around seven years much better than the equivalent number of seconds. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. So let's first add um, a Java doc comment here so we know what this method actually does because we're going to be writing this class over the course of several days as we take breaks and do other things, do some practice on our own. So this method returns a string that describes the average time to crack the cipher. And it does that in several formats like I was just describing. And what it needs to do this calculation is this is all based on the specified number of seconds per guess. Yesterday, we wrote some code that prompted the user um, and asked them, hey, how, how many seconds does it take you to test a guess, a guess key phrase, right? Um, the idea of you're brute forcing this thing and you need to check its key phrase, based on your resources, how many people are helping you. Is it gonna take you three seconds? Is it gonna take you 10 seconds? How long is it gonna take you to test? This method takes a single parameter, so we should document it with the at param tag. The word after at param has to match the name of the parameter variable exactly. So I'm gonna copy and paste it to make sure I don't have any typos. And then I'm gonna describe this as the number of seconds to evaluate each attempt. 
This method has a non-void return type, so we also need an at return. And honestly, what I'm going to put here is the same thing I started the first line here of the documentation with. I'm just going to copy and paste that um, for completeness. A best practice that we want to do when we're writing code is to avoid what are called magic numbers. Magic numbers are number literals, like li in the code, where it's not clear what that number means and what it represents. Okay? Um, instead of having those magic numbers in our code, we can increase the readability of our code, we can re increase the maintainability of our code by instead using variables, variables that are constants. Um, so we, we've learned about constants and how they're in all caps with underscores in the last unit. But today we're gonna learn that there's an actual Java keyword that can enforce constants, such that if we assign a variable um, a value, this keyword will ensure that it is the final value for that variable forever. In fact, if we try to change it, it won't even compile, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So um, here's how we do that. So first, a little bit of background. Instead of using a magic number, so for example, maybe we're reading through some code and we just see the number um, 3.14159. You probably know what that number is. You probably know what someone's trying to do, but maybe you assume it's pi and really it's like some scaling factor. Who knows, right? It's just a magic number. So instead of using a magic number, we're gonna use constants defined by us or defined by the Java standard library. For example, if we looked inside the source code for the math class, or if we look inside the documentation for the math class, in the math class is a line of code or is defined public, static, final, double, pi, equals 3.14159.2654. We know what public means. That's the visibility. That means anyone can refer to this variable. We don't yet know what static means, but we will in a few days, like next week, early next week. So just kind of hold on to that for now. We're gonna ignore the static part. Um, Final is our new keyword. By specifying the keyword final before the variable type, this is what ensures that once we assign the variable pi a number, it can never be changed. So final makes the value of the variable final, right? Can't change it. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the word final. I think they could have used a different word, but that's okay. We'll go with it. They didn't ask me. All right, um, so how do we do this? We declare a constant with the final keyword. And remember by convention, this is just a convention. Final is not a convention, final is a rule. But by convention, constants are, are in all caps with underscores. So we're gonna do a bunch of calculations later, not today, but we're gonna convert a huge number of seconds to, well, how many years is that? And how many uh, days is that? And how many hours is that? Um, and then rather than having magic numbers like 365 and 60 and 24, we're gonna create a set of constants instead. Uh, so let's, let's do that. This is gonna make our code a lot more readable. So we're gonna use the final keyword. And that goes before the type. All of these are gonna be integers. And then we're gonna follow our conventions and use capital letters and underscores. And so our first constant here is seconds for every minute. All right, so how many seconds are in a minute? 60, perfect. We'll have another one. Final keyword before the type int. 
I keep hitting my caps lock because otherwise I find it really hard to type these constants. Next is minutes for every hour. How many minutes are in an hour? 60. Cool. This is a good example right here. Here we're using the same number for both. The advantage of using this, these constants is, is the intention is well known. If we see a calculation later and there's the number 60, it's hard to figure out, like, why is it 60? Is it 60 because there are 60 seconds in a minute? Or is it 60 because there are 60 minutes in every hour? Or is it 60 for some totally other reason? When we have constants, we don't, the cognitive load is lessened. We don't need to worry about those things because it's, it's clear, it's explicit. All right, let's do a third one. Hours, oops, I forgot caps lock. Hours for every day. There are 24 hours in the day. And then finally, we'll do a final integer variable, days for every year. Uh, we'll go with 365, close enough. So now when we get to write the rest of this method, which we'll do later, um, we're never going to use the number 60 or 24 or 365. We're going to choose the appropriate constant instead. And then just to, just to illustrate why this is useful, let's say that we do, I'm going to copy this first variable seconds for every minute. Let's say we do try to change the value of seconds for every minute to 30. When we compile this, we get a really handy error. It says, cannot assign a value to a final variable, seconds for every minute, okay? So the Java compiler is saying, nope, you declared seconds for every minute final, you assigned it a value of 60, you cannot change that. So this is great. This helps our constants become rules and not conventions. So I'm gonna make a note because this is important. If we try to change the value, a compiler compiler error will be generated. So here's another example of a compiler error. And then I'm gonna comment this out because we want our code to compile. Oops. And I guess speaking of that, our code currently doesn't compile. If I try to compile it, I'm told I'm missing a return statement, which is also a really helpful error message um, because this method is to return a string and I'm not returning anything. So while we're here, just to make sure this compiles before we move on to something else today, let's declare a local variable type string called DESC, short for description. We'll initialize it to the empty string We'll leave a whole bunch of space and then we'll say return DESC. We'll come back and fill in our method here, but at least this way, the code will compile while uh, we're working on that. 